going to do that again. So I, what I was saying was, thank you so much, uh, Jody. I think we must have known something was up because I think this topic is more relevant now than ever. Uh, so we are very brilliant people, obviously, <laughs> as all of you are for joining us here today. So um, I'm going to try to make this as interactive as possible. It's a little different. Normally, when I am live and give this talk, I throw prizes out into the audience. So we're not going to be doing that here today, but we'll still try and have some fun. So uh, today we are going to go through three main topics. It's really foundational. A lot of people get very overwhelmed when they think about how to get their lives totally organized. They just think it's an insurmountable task. It'll never happen. I wasn't born with those skills. Uh, good news. I don't think I was born with those skills either. I just happened to really love organizing. And so I practiced it early, often, and now I'm pretty good at it. Um, I've been working with clients in the Cleveland area for about the last eight or nine years. I'm really bad at math. That's why I went to law school. And then I decided I'm way more fun than most attorneys. So I need to do something else with my life. So that is why I uh, decided to become self-employed, um, much to the chagrin of my mother-in-law, who was like, wait, you were leaving a very good career in the litigation field to be an organizer? Yeah, well, I've, I've proven her wrong. And when I show her that I was published in Good Housekeeping and First Magazine, she went, oh, that's, that's great. And I saw her tune change. So that's been a welcome little uh, update for her. Okay, so anyway, we are going to cover today the three basic areas, there's just three that you need to um, learn about and commit to in order to stay organized. And it's really, it's really basic. Most people think it's like they won't be able to do it, but you, you totally can. So one, we're going to talk about how to get started uh, because just this is what so many of my clients get stuck on. They don't even get started because they just don't even, they don't know the first step. They just think it's a huge project and they're just not sure to how even get started. Uh, then we're going to talk about what to do if you get stuck. Another common issue for all of my clients. And third, how to maintain your progress so that you never have to figure out how to get started again. Um, plus, I'm going to go over three games to make the entire process much more enjoyable because everything is more fun when it's a game. If it is uh, boring, then you are so not going to want to do it. So I'm going to give you some uh, games that you can use and you can play uh, to make it easier and more fun. So let's, and as you can tell, I'm a fast talker. So apologies. My parents are always like, can you just take a breath and slow down? And I'm like, no, there's so much, so much goodness, so much good information I want to share with you today. So first, um, getting started, maybe this is where we can be interactive. So uh, I want you to be ready to type in answers into the chat and then uh, I can respond that way. But how much time do you think people spend looking for things every year? And the answer is going to be in weeks, not days. So that is your hint. So how many weeks per year do you think people spend just looking for things that they already own? Wow, three, six, 16, four, 26. Good Lord, no, okay, it's not as high as 26. For most people, it, is, it ranges anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. Good Lord, that's like three, the equivalent of three vacation periods that you normally get from employers. That is a lot of time to be spending for stuff that you already own. So, that is primarily a, a common issue that happens with most people that are disorganized. They don't know what they have. They don't know where it is. So they go out and they buy yet another pair of scissors. And then when I come to work with them, I usually, we unearth all of the scissors and they're like, how did I get all of these scissors? And I said, cause you couldn't find the first pair. So you went out and bought another and they laugh <laughs> and go, oh yes, Christina, that, that is what happened. So um, just keep that in mind when you are starting that you already do have the time to commit to this project because you're already spending it looking for things that you already have and can't find. So if you want to just uh, reallocate your time to something more productive, then this will keep that framework in mind. Uh, it'll, it'll help you uh, stay motivated. 
So first, when you're starting, most clients ask me like, well, where's the best place to start? Because everyone wants to make the most of their time and use it wisely, right? Because time is the one thing that we can't make more of. Um, and so I'm going to tell you a secret. And I know this is probably really surprising, but there actually isn't a best place to start. It's going to vary for everybody. And I know that's a hard thing because it's not really an answer, but it actually is because you just have to pick a space and just do it and um, just kind of live into Nike's you know, slogan, just, just do it, just get started. That's the very first place. Um, and if you're really unsure, because some people don't like that answer at all, then when I am working with clients, I usually ask them to spend, uh, to pick, pick a space that they spend the most amount of time in or uh, the bedroom. And the reason I like to start with the bedroom is so that you are ending and beginning your day in a space that you love, that brings you peace, that is um, totally in order, that you feel good about. And I feel that you can take that good energy and use it throughout your day to positively affect your life, like kind of all throughout the day when you're, you're really just setting the tone at the beginning, at the end, with this good feeling. So if you're really stuck, start in your bedroom. And then I don't like to um, recommend that people, like how many people have tried, or yeah, how many people have tried the um, condo, Marie Kondo's method of going through every, yes, yeah, so I see a few hands up. Um, so, a lot of people, when I give talks, they go, okay, do you recommend that method? And I always, so actually I was talking to another group of female entrepreneurs and this one um, attendee raised her hand sheepishly and said, hey, do you, do you recommend that method? And I didn't really answer her with an answer. Like a good attorney, I gave her a question right back. And I said, well, what has it worked for you? And she giggled and she said, well, it has been nine months, and so far I've decluttered all of the pants in our house. So nine months and just her pants. And I said, well, I think you've answered your own question that it's really not working for you because I'm pretty sure you, and I knew that she owned actually like a gym. I'm like, you're a successful business person. You, I don't think this is working for you, so you need to do another method. And what I what I recommend versus getting doing all of your pants and then all of your shirts and then all of all of the towels in your house I recommend focusing your energy on a specific room and getting one room done instead of flitting from room to room to room and doing a little bit here but not really getting anywhere it's a really good way to get yourself overwhelmed and not feel like you're making any progress when you do the um you know, all the papers in one room and all the papers in another room. Like really just and concentrate your effort. How are you? Good. I think someone needs to mute. Um, so anyway, just keep that in mind when you're picking, when you're picking your space. Um, and once you've chosen the space, I want you to think about how you're going to use the space because the decisions uh, those types of decisions will really help you decide what needs to stay in the room and what needs to go. Because a lot of people get really stuck with, well, but I, I need this. Well, do you need it in this room or can it go? Like you can make um, a lot of the decisions about how you need the room to function uh, based on what, what needs to go in. So there, it's a paired, uh, paired decision. So you want to look at uh, the list of functions, like who else needs to live in the room? What are their considerations? What, what can based on those, uh, that criteria, what can go and what needs to stay. Um, so those are some of the big overarching questions. I always ask those in the first session of working with any client. The, and then again, I will go back to them throughout, throughout our time together, uh, much to their surprise. They're like, wait, I'm like, you already, they'll ask me a question about whether they should get rid of something. I'm like, you've already answered this question. Remember what's your goal for this space? And they say for it to be, um, usually most people want spaces where they feel in control, it's peaceful, it's non, not cluttered, uh, where they can actually live their life and they don't have to worry about cleaning. Um, 
and so I just referenced their answers to the earlier questions and they're like surprised. They're like, oh, there's a reason we spent all that time thinking about how we wanted the room to function and what we wanted to do in the room. And I say, absolutely, it's all connected. All right, so here's another quiz question. What percentage of our stuff that we own do we never use? What do you think? 20? Oh, someone said 85. Who is that? It's going really fast. It is actually 80%. Yes, 80% of our stuff that we have in our house, we never use. And why is that? Well, there's a lot of, I'm going to use that one day, or it's still good, or it was a gift, and I hate chickens, but my mother gave me this porcelain chicken, and I feel that I need to keep it in case mom comes over. Uh, so all that kind of fills into 80%. So I tell you this, why? There, if you're really actually honest with yourself about what you need, and if that aligns with your goal of getting organized, there's a lot of stuff that can go that you don't even have to feel bad about. So for example, um, one of my longtime clients, I've been working with her for, I think about three years now, and I love her. Uh, she lives near the lake in Edgewater. And in fact, she can walk to Edgewater from her condo. And so one of the very first times that we were working together, we were going through her front hall closet because her condo had a lot of stuff in it that she just, she didn't need, it was in her way and she just needed help getting rid of everything or going through it and getting it organized. So we pulled everything out of her closet because it was so stuffed, really couldn't see what was in there. And she had this very nice collection of hats. And uh, the thing is she had a hairstyle that wasn't very conducive to hats. So I already knew right off the bat, she wasn't wearing the majority of these hats because the style of the hats would ruin her hairstyle. So I already kind of knew that this would be a good uh, candidate to, uh, of items to let go. And so we were going through her hats and I would hold one up and I would just say like, what is this hat? Like, do you, do you want this hat? And um, most of the time she'd say no. And so we were getting rid of, I think we'd already gotten rid of like 25 hats. There were a lot of hats and uh, mostly baseball hats. And then we got to this one hat and it was a floppy beach hat. And I said, what about, the flop what about this beach hat? And she said, everybody needs a floppy beach hat. And I said, oh, no, no, not everybody needs a floppy beach hat. And I said this in my head, I didn't say this out loud. And so my next question to her was, how long have you lived here? And she said, oh, about eight years, maybe 10 years. She couldn't remember, eight to 10 years. I said, how many times since you've lived here in those eight to 10 years, have you gone to the beach? She looked at me and she said, the hat can go. See, so not everybody needs a floppy beach hat. Not everybody needs that floppy beach hat. So I want you to remember that story when you are trying to go through your stuff and you're like, but, I, but everybody needs this. Everybody does not. Everybody might, but you actually don't. She actually did not need that beach hat. It was cluttering up her space. It was get, literally getting in her way. She, it was making it impossible for her to get to things in the closet. And by her getting really honest and realistic about what she needed, she was honest. She did not need that floppy beach hat. So that was a small win. And people always love that story because it's really kind of funny, right? <laughs> it's like, because we make these assumptions and that's, and we have these um, kind of beliefs that yes, everybody needs these things, but you don't. And if it's getting in your way of having an organized space, then that is a great option to leave immediately without guilt. Um, all right. So now that you have an idea of how to pick a space and how to get started, now I want to kind of transition into um, decluttering because that's everybody's favorite topic. I love to declutter when I am not feeling great. I will just pick a drawer and give it a quick zhuzh and I will, that gives me a quick win and gives me a hit of endorphins and it's awesome. But it is very overwhelming for some people. So I want to let you in on a little tool that I like to use. So I have made these decluttering cards. So these are like just little labels because I don't know, it, especially these are helpful if you are decluttering like a big space where you have trouble keeping 
uh, your different piles straight where you're worried that your your trash pile because you don't you never want to uh, get your trash pile and your donate piles confused or your trash and your cell piles confused that would be bad <laughs> that has happened <laughs> to a client she actually put something in the wrong thing and she's like where'd that go and i was like that was in the donate pile and that went to the donation place last week and she's like oh well and i'm like so sorry that we got that screwed up so then we started using these but it's really helpful so that if you need to have a visual reminder of what's what they also work really well for if um you are working in a room and you need to take a break or you get a phone call so that you don't you don't lose track of, of things and if you don't have a fancy schmancy set of cards laminated all pretty like these then you can do the same with um, a really good sticky note and um, just label it with a black sharpie so it's really clear to see you make things easy for yourself um, okay so once you have um, figured out your room and you're going to start to declutter, it can get overwhelming super fast. So here's the first game that I want you to play and it's super easy. I've been playing this with my husband since before we even had kids. Yes, I was that kind of a wife. He would set, I'd set a timer for 15 minutes on the microwave and I'd be like, we're going to pick everything up for those 15 minutes. We're not going to, if we find some magazines that we want to read, now is not the time to read them. Now is the time to pick them up and put them in the magazine basket. We will get to them later, but now we just wanna go ahead and get everything picked up. And it is amazing. Once you start playing this game, you will be amazed by how much you can get done in such a short amount of time. Because 15 minutes, I don't know about you, I've had two babies in 15 minutes, like the active pushing part. So like you can get a lot done in 15 minutes. It is a short amount of time, um, but it really helps to break down what seems very overwhelming into small manageable chunks. It is also good to get the cooperation of uh, partners, spouses, and children also like to play this game. I used to play this with my kids when they were younger, when the toy room would get out of control, I just put a timer on and I'd be like, go, let's see how much we can get done um, before the time runs out. But the important caveat about this game is that you don't answer your phone either, because that'll just distract you. So you can give them a call back in 15 minutes, it'll probably be just fine. Um, all right, so another quiz for you guys. How much time do you think that clutter adds to the overall cleaning time? Like the amount of time that it takes to clean, how much additional time do you have to clean because of clutter? So it's a percentage I'm looking for. 90%, ooh, that's another one. No, it's 40%. Thank goodness it's not 90%, but still 40%, that is a lot. That's a lot of time. So if you think about it, if you have like a bathroom counter that has a whole bunch of junk on it, that's gonna take a heck of a lot longer to clean than something that has a nice cleared off counter or maybe a um, counter that has a small basket or a tray with a amount, small amount of stuff in it. So if you are one of the people like me, I don't really like cleaning, um, then you need to declutter and then you'll spend less time cleaning. So I guess, what I just want to clearly communicate is that we are all very busy business women, but we are spending our time in unwise ways where we could spend it a lot smarter by just taking some time to declutter and organize a space. And then that'll translate into big wins for us in other ways that we don't even actively measure. Um, so when you are getting rid of decluttering your stuff, does anybody here ever put stuff in bags and then they toss it behind their couch or chuck it in the back of their car and they drive it around town for a couple of weeks? Anybody ever done that? Yes, I see some, some smiles and nods. Okay, what I want you to do instead, we have an awesome service here in Cleveland um, and you can actually schedule donation pickups online without having to talk to a human at donatestuff.com. It is totally free. You get to choose your charity. They, um, what I think when I first started uh, using them personally, and then I shared this uh, tidbit with clients, 
um, they were partnered with the city mission and now I think that's changed but you they have a couple different charitable organizations that you can choose to benefit with by like just decluttering so it's awesome and the other nice thing is they have never not shown up for me and so it's it's super easy you can go on go online and see what days are going to be on your street you select the day you put the stuff out the night before so you don't forget and then um, the little fairies will come and pick it up and make it go away and you won't have it stuck in the back of your car um, giving it a ride showing it a good time around town um, so so use them and that website again is donatestuff.com um, all right and some other really oh i know i what one reason i wanted to talk about um, some of the I know this is a constant issue with some of the donation pickup pickup um, charities. I know one person told me one client shared with me that she'd gotten super motivated. She had twin boys and they were like I don't know like fourth grade, way out of like high chair stage. And so she decided, okay, I'm ready to get rid of all of the baby stuff. And so she packaged everything up. She scheduled an appointment, not with donate stuff com with somebody else put it on her front porch got it all ready for them they didn't come and then that night there was an ice storm and froze all of the stuff to her front porch in Cleveland Heights she was a very unhappy woman <laughs> because everything was like wet and just stuck and it was a giant mess and with twin kids I was like oh I feel for you um, but so use donate stuff.com or another reputable um, charity person to avoid having your stuff freeze to your front porch like that. All right, so uh, these are not games that I use, but just general rules that I like to use and just think about um, and when you are decluttering. So the first one is the ABC rule. And that stands for always be carrying. So when you are going uh, anywhere in your house or even in your office, have something in your hand if these the decluttering cards need to go back into my work bag then i just carry them with me and just make sure that you are using your travels in your own house really wisely by taking things where they need to go it's a really easy way to get to sneak in a little decluttering um, and and having things go you know end up in their home base um, where they go so that is a really good one, the ABC rule. And the other one, and this is really good because um, clutter is just a delayed decision. It does not mean you're a bad person. It does not mean that, I don't know what it could mean possibly, but a lot of people attach a lot of like um, feelings and a lot of judgments to clutter, but it, it's, it's really just a delayed decision. So I want you to combat clutter with the one touch rule. And that means that you're going to aim to touch everything one time and you're going to make a decision about it. And the decision cannot be that you're going to decide later because that is for losers. You want a true decision. So this means when you go and get your mail for the day, you're going to make a decision. You're like, oh, junk mail, recycle. Oh, uh, circular from Macy's, I don't really need any more clothes recycle so while it's in your hot little hands you're going to make a decision about it instead of putting it down for later because when you put things down for later it always always takes more time to deal with it later than if you would have just made the decision initially so you can play the one touch rule with the decluttering game and you can challenge yourself sometimes it's kind of uncomfortable to make a decision about something right away but that is one of the ways that um, organized people keep their houses and spaces organized. They're making those decisions on a regular. So if you're challenging yourself to make, um, to, to make a decision the first time you touch something, you're really gonna be surprised about how those decisions add up to not producing clutter, right? Okay, so now let's talk about what if you get stuck? So you're trying to declutter, but you get really overwhelmed because you just don't know what to do next. Uh, that is probably a sign that you're trying to do, do trying to do too much. Again, back to the Marie Kondo um, example. I haven't watched her show, but I understand that some people who've watched her show on Netflix um, have just been like kind of overwhelmed by the process because she will, if you're unfamiliar, apparently she will take out everything in your closet and dump it on your bed. 
I guess to make you feel overwhelmed, I think that's a really crappy way to be is to feel like that. So um, I don't recommend doing that. I, instead of emptying out your entire closet, um, I would do one section at a time. So maybe just do your shoes. And if you have a lot of shoes, maybe just do your summer shoes for one 15 minute stretch and then do winter boots for another 15 minute stretch. And when you chunk it up like that, it's not going to be overwhelming. It would be overwhelming if you were to empty your entire stinking closet all at once to your bed, because you probably, most people just don't have the time to clear out their entire schedule to make time to declutter their closet or their kitchen or whatever. And most spaces are really involved in its, um, if you have younger kids, you're probably familiar with the, if you give a mouse a cookie, the, those books, yes? Okay, so if you're not familiar, here's how this book goes. So this mouse wants, um, he wants a cookie. And so the little boy gives him a cookie, but then the mouse has dry mouth, so he wants some milk. And then when they're on the way to, to get the milk, then the mouse sees some crayons and he wants to make some art. So then the little boy has to go get him paper. And then that mouse says, well, not just crayons, but I, I, I want some scissors so I can cut things up and he needs tape. And then you progress through the book and the mouse just keeps wanting more and more things because it's snowballed. And at the end of the book, the whole house is a mess, all because the mouse wanted a cookie. Getting organized often can be like giving that mouse that cookie. It just, it sets off a chain of events or it can if you're not focused and that can make you really overwhelmed because you're like, oh, I have gotten nothing done, but I've organized this drawer and I've started to organize that, that closet and I have a pile of stuff to go here. And so that's why I want you to remember to keep focused your efforts in one space. And um, it can be something as small as a single drawer. Like if you have a lot to do, a single drawer can be really significant because the amount of work that it takes to organize that one drawer, there's a lot of mental work behind it and emotional work. And so you have to mentally kind of get there. I had a very good friend text me just a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a month ago. And she's like, oh my God, I just, I'm a hot mess. You know, you know me, I'm a hot mess and I don't know where to start where you just tell me. And so I told her just kind of like what I've already shared with you. And then, um, um, she wrote me a couple of weeks later and said, oh my gosh, Thank you so much. Everything you said worked so well. And I have, um, but the only thing is I've only organized like one drawer. And I was like, that's okay. And she goes, but I feel mentally like so much better. Like I can actually do this this time. So um, I um, just want you to keep in mind. And I was just like, that is right. She had done all of the mental work to get to that place. So that don't discount that. That's important work. But at the same time, don't let that be all there is. So, um, all right, the next game I want you to play is the uh, TV commercial break challenge. Who likes to watch TV here? Yes, I do too. I don't like to watch commercials though. That's why I was made for Netflix. So uh, what I want you to do is if you are feeling really overwhelmed, a really quick way to kind of get yourself unstuck is to actually take a break. But I don't want you to take a break by getting on Facebook because that in fact, uh, it's, they've done studies, these very important, I don't even know who it is, like research scientists have done studies that it takes 20 minutes to get refocused after you go on social media. 20 minutes. That's a long time if you're like constantly needing breaks. Um, so instead, flip on the TV, watch a show that has commercials, but when commercial time comes, get up and do whatever you've been putting off. A commercial lasts about three minutes. That's a lot, that's a, like a good amount of time to get something done. And um, chances are you will, by taking the little break to watch the show, you will get, have given yourself the break that you actually need. And I always like to use the um, TV commercials, like can I do whatever I've been putting off or at least get it started before the commercial come, ends before the show comes back on. So again, it's like a little game. All these like dumb little motivators can really help you. <clears throat> so. Christina, Christina, we have about four more minutes left. And I we know. tried to stop on time. So I just wanted to- I know y'all like were work. wrong with your introductions, but it's okay. I know, I'm I, sorry. I have, it's okay. I have a resource for everybody. All right. So 
um, the best thing you can do is just take small little breaks because breaks bring clarity that you might not even realize. And don't overthink things. Don't try to figure out what the best thing to do is. Just do it. Action is more important than perfection. And the last thing you can do if you get stuck is to work with a professional. So a professional like me can help you identify your goals and um, help you give, get, get a plan set for how to live into those goals so that it's not overwhelming so that it can happen. Because a lot of this stuff, it's just like anything else when you hire a professional. Yes, if, or when you don't, I'm sorry, when you try and do it on yourself, by yourself. If you try and do it by yourself, it'll get done, but it's probably gonna take a heck of a lot longer than if you work with someone who knows the tricks and the shortcuts and the different games like I've shared here with you today. All right, so in three minutes, we are gonna talk about how to maintain. Uh, first, stop buying things. Look for quality over quantity. It's very important. Uh, keep playing that timer game every single day. I like to do it at night to kind of give everything like rooms. When I leave them, when I say goodnight to my house, I go through, close the windows, lock the doors, and I'll kind of like put a couple things away just because in the morning then you'll just feel like, oh, this is already done. You're not walking into a mess. Uh, donate, donate stuff on the regular. Maybe set a day of the month that you are going to do it by the 15th of the month. Um, you're going to have out a new box and then you're going to fill it by the end of the month and it's going to leave your house on the first, right? Because again, you can schedule with DonateStuff.com. Um, the last tip I have for you is do not get a storage unit. Uh, turns out that like one in 11 Americans are paying over $1,000 a month for storage units. And that just breaks my heart because you could do so much with $1,000, right? Um, and that's actually $12,000 a year. So don't get a storage unit. Practice the one touch rule, make a decision. The decision can never be, again, to make a decision another day. And it can also never be to put in a storage unit that is not your friend there. Um, and I have two minutes left, so I'm gonna try and sneak in the one last game I have. Uh, I had these clients and they were both um, not really motivated to keep their space clean, but they were kind of sick and tired of themselves. And so we, I came up with this game with them on the spot because I'm really good at coming up with games for people. And I said, well, what is something that you guys don't like to do? And almost immediately they both shouted at me, picking up after the dog outside. And I was like, awesome, awesome. So what you guys are gonna do is gonna make a bet with each other that whoever does not um, do the 15 minute game a day and whoever does not pick, pick their stuff up, they have to go pick up after the dog. And they were like, boom, genius. So find the equivalent of picking up after the dog and play that game so that you can kind of challenge somebody else. And it's more fun, right? When it's a game like that and you'll feel more connected. Okay, so another game that you can play, and this is, I'm, I've already pre-typed it in here uh, to the chat. So I'm gonna just share it with you all is I have created a bingo, organizing bingo card that you can download and play along for free. Um, so you can head there too. And I made a fancy little page just for everybody here that came today. So it's streamlinelivingoh.com slash win. Um, but you can download the bingo card and it will help you get organized because there's like, I forget how many squares are on there, but there's a bunch of squares and it'll give you a different game or resource. Um, some of the things that I've talked today, I uh, have blog posts about that I just kind of reiterated because some of the stuff you're going to need to hear more than once in order to make it a regular practice in order to keep your life organized. So I hope this was really helpful. I thought I saw some laughs and some nods and oh yes. So I'm really, I'm excited about that. And um, thank you for having me today. Christina, 